Tony, thanks for coming on. Uh, Pleasure. Just to clarify, that little holding hands <laughs> bit there, because you actually broke your hand in the fight on Saturday. Yeah, I fractured the knuckle, uh, the second knuckle in, so it's just swollen and damaged, but I've got the, most of the bruising out now. It's slightly bit different colour, but... Uh, the, the, the spoils of war, isn't it? So, you know, all is fair in love and war, as they say. The fight at the weekend yeah. captured the nation's, the nation's attention. The big build-up to it. I'm sure there's people in here who saw the fight. Give me a cheer if you saw the fight. Yeah. Thank it, you very really, much. it really did, because it was an old-style rivalry between two people mm. who appeared to really not like each other. Now, how much of that trash talk is real? He didn't, it didn't appear nothing. I, I couldn't stand him. Uh, <laughs> I enjoyed nothing more than smacking him in the chops, if the truth be <laughs> I, I admire him as an athlete and the great fighter he is and was, uh, but I, I don't like him. <laughs> I, don't like him as, as the, I don't like him from a personal perspective, no. I don't think he's a nice fella there. Uh, and I think some of the things he said in the build-up was, was disgusting. And he portrayed boxing in, a, in, a, in well, he portrayed himself in a very poor light. Basically, yeah. he stuck his media profile in the toilet, and on Saturday night, I flushed it. <laughs> <laughs> this has raised your profile massively in the last, I suppose, eighteen months, two years. It's been a hell of a hell of a journey for you. Yeah, it, I could never. If you gave my story and my life to someone in a movie theatre and said, right, make a movie on that, they'd say, take it away, you're taking the piss. <laughs> that just did not happen to this lad. I'm just a normal lad from the streets of Liverpool. And uh, I've been in a Rocky movie, for God's sake. It just, it doesn't seem But real. that's what I mean, in 2015, you, you're a professional boxer, you're a European champion, you're yes. building your way up, and then, and then you get a phone call to be in the next Rocky film. Yes. I mean, first of all, where's the phone call come from? And believe you me, I thought it was a wind-up. Uh, I remember the phone call coming in. I remember the day perfectly. Well, I remember it for the wrong reasons. Everton had just been bounced 6-3 everywhere at home. To I Chelsea. remember that yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> I really remember that day. <laughs> uh, we'd just been beat at home to Chelsea 6-3, and uh, my phone goes on the way home, and I was getting ready for a camp for the rematch I had with the, the Welsh fella, and it was... The phone call come in, it was like, listen, Tony, my name's such and such, and I'm calling on behalf of uh, of Sylvester Stallone and Warner Brothers. You know, do you want to audition you? Or well, do you want to see you to be in the movie, the next movie, Rocky? And I just went, I don't know what's going on here. Whose phone do you make? But I think you must have the wrong number. You know, I just, <laughs> I basically just thought it was a piss take if the truth be known. You know, listen, your phone doesn't go, and I thought he phoned back again, and then he said, I don't think you believe me, do you? And I said, Listen, mate. I'm not really in the mood, to be honest. I've just watched my team get... <laughs> I've just watched my team get tank 6-3. Just leave it out, all right? Come on. <laughs> Endured enough for one day. He phoned me back a third time, and on the third time, I just said, listen, where did you get my number from? And he went, I got it off Ross Barkley. The phone went down immediately. Ross Barkley's a football player. He plays for my beloved football, Everton Football Club. And I phoned Ross, and the first word I said to Ross was, listen, lad, if you're and the lads are having me on, I swear to God, your car's going to be on bricks in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh... What's the future looking for you now? Because the heavyweight division does attract more interest, doesn't it? But it's not your natural, natural weight, is it's it? It's not my natural weight, but I'm going to be honest, I like me food, so it's it. <laughs> <laughs> I like Nando's. Uh... <laughs> I haven't stopped eating it since I've moved up in weight. I like me food, that's the best way of saying it. I, I'm a big lad, I'm six foot three. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not really a heavyweight and I've just fought an absolute monster in David Hay and believe you me, every time he hits you, you know, you get a sickening feeling to the back of your throat thinking, when's this fella gonna stop? You've played it down, you've just said, I'm a big fat lad, no, listen. And then he gets into the ring, body beautiful. Yes. And even you were saying, well, he looks well. He looks fantastic, don't he? Gets in, he's got... He's got big six-pack, big muscles, big chest, and then the fat fella gets in and he's like... <laughs> you know what? A fella put on... I've seen on Twitter and, on, and social media kind of does me nothing at times, but it's a necessary evil. And uh, I've seen a fella put a picture of my body and his body and, and he put after it, 
if this Bell you wins tomorrow, I'm going to deactivate my account. <laughs> <laughs> just, just based on them two pitches, because one fella looks like the Mitchell man and the other fella looks like Mr. Universe. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? Boxing isn't about how good your body looks. Boxing is about how hard you work at your craft, how dedicated you are to it. I, I don't do boxing, I live it. And I've lived it for a very, very long time. It's took over my life. I've sacrificed and dedicated my life to it. I don't play at boxing. I give it everything I've got and I've lived it every single day since the day I turned professional right up till now. And it showed on Saturday night. One guy trains to have a beautiful body. The other guy trains to fight to the finish. And that showed on Saturday night. <laughs> Someone's just told me we've actually got that picture. Have you got it? To be fair, that you're not bad until you look at that. I know. <laughs> so the average fella, I'm not that bad. Well, I just I listen. I am the average fella. I'm a normal person. Yeah, I'm but no what got special. you into it? What 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 made you box? Was it because often with boxers you find there's been a story, they've been yeah. bullied, or they always wanted to do it, or do somebody you know like. Muhammad Ali, someone stole his stole bicycle. Bike, yeah. What, what no, happened? No one, no one bullied me, to be honest. I was 15 stone at 15 years of age, so they knew they were getting a crack either way. <laughs> <laughs> I stayed an amateur. I had no real desire. I didn't think I was ever good enough to win a world title, if the truth be known. Yeah. I turned professional because she got up to duff. And I never <laughs> had <that point. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> Being your yeah, partner. Yeah, me missus got up the door. Rachel, so she, yeah. yeah, Rachel got, got pregnant. I've been, I've been with Rachel since she was 17. I've known her since she was nine years old. Uh, she got pregnant and I was still an amateur and I was like, these amateurs isn't paying the bills. And, um, you know, we've got to get a mortgage, got to do this and that. So I thought, just turn over. I definitely win a British title. And I thought, I'll, I'll earn enough to pay, to buy a house. Because you're a father now with three sons, yes, aren't you? Yes, three boys. Does, does that... The fact that Rachel became pregnant at that time, did you go, oh, I've now got to do something? 100%. If that hadn't have happened, do you yeah. think you would have just started? Oh, 100%, you... 100%. If I never had my kids and I never had Rachel, I wouldn't do what the things I do. I, there's no way I would have been. I would not have been world champion. I wouldn't have done the things I've done. Uh, believe it or not, mate, I do not like getting punched in the face. <laughs> I uh, so I, I, so I, what, what about your boys? Would you encourage them to do it? No, no. Me, me eldest is 11, Corey. I believe she's going to be the next Conor McGregor, but that's uh, the kids living in dream world. My ass, there's no chance. <laughs> there's no chance in a million years I'm letting him go. I'm not getting punched in the face and bleeding, so we can go and do it as well. You get married this yes, year. Next year. Next year. Yeah, it takes time to prepare for that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, yeah, it takes time. How long, how long have you been together? I've been. We've been together for 15 years. This, this it doesn't take year. that fucking long. <laughs> I always said I'm fucking engaged, never to be married. So, <laughs> but you know what? She's uh, she's me mate. She's me. Uh, she's me friend, and, and we've been together. I, I couldn't have done well, so we've done this together. And what? Uh, <laughs> what's next? What, what's the next thing for you? you, you I, I know that you've, this is a week of recovery, a week of doing press, and everyone's going to be asking if you got an opponent lined up, or are you, you you suggest on Saturday you might. Knock it on the head. What's we sat down, me and my missus, she come home from Dubai, and my trainer wants me to retire. Uh, my missus wants to move house again, so... <laughs> <laughs> I've just moved house 18 months ago, but uh, I don't know, we're, we're gonna see. Uh, <laughs> so we've you got a wedding Your thing. missus, you'll meet my missus. Oh, mate. <laughs> the, the amount of times Melanie looks at the curtains and goes, in the time you went on tour. <laughs> Just, I'd, I'd be honest, I'd be telling lies to you all if I said I know what's next. I don't know what's next. Uh, I'm going to just think about it. What I will say is, is the next move that I make, it won't be for... I won't be thinking to get this fight, to get this bill, or to please this guy or that guy. The next decision I make will be purely to benefit me and my family, and I don't care what anyone thinks of it or what anyone says. I'll do what's right for me, here and the kids, and I'm not that would be <laughs> Well, 
I think you can tell by the reaction in the room, you know, the, I, I'm so pleased you came on here to talk, because I know you've not done any interviews since it, and I know, I know a lot of people only know you as the aggressive man in the press conference yeah. and, and the fight, but I think we've seen another side here, the genuine Thank side, you. and the side that will be there throughout your life. And if the sport's gone, you're still going to be the man that you are today, which yeah. is in itself a great achievement. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs>